بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Qasim says, I had this dream in October or November 2007. In this dream, I find myself standing in the confines of my own home. Abruptly, the world around me spiraled into darkness as heavy load shedding gripped the land, plunging us into a shroud of darkness. Persistent blackouts began to envelop our homes, leaving us in anguish. When at long last, the electricity flickered back on, it was only for a short while before it would vanish again. Uneasiness settled over the people as they pondered, how can we live life like this? Then we discover that the electric generator units were broken. Worst yet, the coffers of the government lay empty, devoid of the funds needed for their repair. This was our chilling truth. This was to be our harsh reality for the rest of our lives. As days bled into nights, the lifestyle of the people took on a bleaker tone. Frustration seethed among the people, their lives strangled by the perpetual darkness. Then one night, I broke the silence of despair saying, What's the point of this kind of life? It is as if we are living in an older era devoid of electricity. I must venture out and search for the light. It is better to search for the light rather than sitting around. Under the shroud of night, I invoked the name of Allah and ventured out of my home, equipped with only a small torch. I embarked on a journey that would take me beyond the confines of the city, into the heart of the dark void that stretched endlessly before me. As I ventured deeper into the dark abyss, uncertainty gnawed at my resolve. I start thinking, which way should I go, as I couldn't understand anything, placing my faith solely in Allah. I chose a direction and asked Allah to lead me towards a place where there is light. After a long walk, my eyes finally beheld a distant glow. I saw a place lit with fire in the vast desolation. A rush of relief washed over me as I quickened my pace towards the source of the radiance. As I drew nearer, the illumination revealed an unusual towering structure, a colossal edifice which soared 15 to 20 stories high. Its form aglow with a mesmerizing dance of flames a lit outside of its windows. I marveled at the phenomena before me, awestruck by its existence, for I had never before encountered or heard of such strange architecture. I say, well, it doesn't matter, all I needed was light, and so I entered the building. Upon entering the building, I found myself within a sprawling hall that bore semblance to a dining establishment, and there were people inside, sitting and eating. Fiery lanterns adorned every corner, casting a delicate glow that bathed the surroundings in a warm, flickering light. Yet an unfamiliar and unsettling aroma lingered in the air. I could see a counter there, and a staircase in the distance. As I walked towards the stairs, I didn't stare at anyone. However, a person walked by me, and I couldn't help but glance at him, only to be seized by an overwhelming shock. The visage that met my eyes was otherworldly, far removed from any human appearance I had ever encountered. I say, who is this? This does not look like a human being to me. It bore a colossal head, small ears, and a scary face that sent chills down my spine. A chilling realization took a hold of me as I surveyed the room more closely. None of the occupants were humans. These beings were none other than the jinn, creatures of smokeless fire. I say to myself, Qasim, they only have lanterns of fire and it smells weird too. They must be jinn. Amid my astonishment, I couldn't help but wonder why the jinn paid no heed to me. Why didn't they seize me or forcibly expel me from their realm? Then I say, Perhaps it was Allah's blessings that shielded me from their gaze as I left with my trust solely in Allah. Nonetheless, I climbed the stairs and reached the second floor. There I saw many rooms, and the jinns also inhabited this floor. I then go to the third floor, and finally reach the top floor. Along the way, I encountered other jinns as well. Yet by the mercy of Allah, I remained concealed from their notice. Finally. I reached the top floor of the building. On the top floor, I saw a vast hall spread before me, and a small room guarded by giant, formidable jinns. 
this back in my curiosity, I said to myself, these jinns for sure have something valuable in that room. The jinn kind were bipedal. They walked upright on two legs. Their physical structure was very similar to a human's. However, some stark differences made them different from humankind. Their skin tones were in the shades of gray, of different hues of blue, greens, or other colors. They had an extraordinarily large face and jaw with smaller ears. Some had a regular body structure. However, the others, especially the guards, were more terrifying and had a stronger build and they wielded unique weapons unlike anything I had ever seen before. Perhaps these were the elites or the ifrits guarding the ring, but Allah knows best. I approached the room and slowly and cautiously opened the door and snuck inside. The interior of the room bathed in a soft glow of the lanterns. Inside the room, atop a table, rested a small box, its contents a mystery yet to be uncovered. I grasped the box and carefully exited that room and started to swiftly head back. As I crossed the threshold and left the building, a wave of happiness washed over me. The mercy of Allah had shielded me from the gaze of the jinn, otherwise the jinn would not have spared me. I tell myself that, at the very least, I have found something. Once again, I invoke the name of Allah to lead me to an even better place than before. I ask, O oh Allah, this time take me to an even better place than this. After a lengthy journey, I see in the distance an area illuminated by a brilliant, pristine light. Its radiance looked very bright to me. I hastened towards this breathtaking spectacle, drawing near. My eyes beheld a grand building, filled with light. I marveled at the majesty before me, my heart swelling with gratitude for Allah's benevolence. It was a place beyond imagination, a sanctuary of light and beauty. I say, Allah has truly heard my prayers and led me to a place beyond my imagination. Filled with anticipation, I confidently think to myself, no one will be able to see me within this building, and surely there must be a treasure on the top floor that I can take with me and leave this place. With these comforting thoughts, I enter the building. As I entered the building, an overwhelming sense of awe overcame me. The grandeur of the place was nothing short of immaculate, a testament to the impeccable craftsmanship and artistic detail that adorned every corner. It was a marvelous, beautiful place that touched my heart, adorned with decorations everywhere. In the distance, I spotted an elevator, and on my left-hand side, I saw a counter. I say, no one will be able to see me here, and I hastened towards the elevator, but someone from behind called me. They announced, Qasim, wait a moment. My steps stopped. I became shocked and froze on the spot. I say, I thought no one would be able to see me, and I would take the treasure and run from here, but someone has seen me, and he even knows my name. I had believed I would remain invisible, yet here was someone who not only saw me, but he knew my name. Doubt and fear clawed at my resolve, as I stood there frozen in the face of this unexpected revelation, uncertain of the nature of the entity that called me. In that moment of uncertainty and fear, I turned around to face a presence that left me astonished. Before me stood Prophet Sulaiman standing by the counter. I look at Sulaiman and become shocked thinking, what is Sulaiman doing here? Sulaiman asked me to come closer. He was wearing beautiful garments of unparalleled purity and flawlessness. When I gazed upon his face, his appearance left me mesmerized. I couldn't fathom that a being could possess such breathtaking beauty. My gaze was drawn to his face, and there it remained, frozen in admiration of Allah's creation. Every aspect of him was perfect, from his features to his chromacity, and his dark graceful hair which appeared as if water would flow from it. His eyes held the depth that seemed to contain the entire world's pure waters. Sulaiman inquired about the box I held saying, Qasim, where did you get that box from? As he spoke, I witnessed roses, pearls, and other flower petals 
coming out of his mouth. I shared the tale of my journey. I tell him this box was in a building that was lit by fire, and I felt as if the jinns lived there. Suleiman asked me in a shocking tone, Did the jinns not see you? I say, No, they did not see me. And I was surprised too, but Allah protected me by His mercy. Suleiman affirmed, No doubt Allah is the best of protector. I kept gazing upon Suleiman and reflecting about Allah's creation. I thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in six days and six nights. Suleiman must have been created in a century. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made everything in Suleiman perfect with no flaws left in him. I contemplated that all of Allah's prophets are pure and if Prophet Suleiman alayhisalam's beauty was this beautiful, then imagine what must the beauty of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam be like. Suleiman alayhisalam then says to me, Qasim, within that box is a ring. You may keep the ring, but give me the box. It is useless for you and I shall return it back from where you got it. Those jinns dwelling there are extremely malevolent and if they discover that the box is missing, they will pursue you relentlessly and if you do not return this ring and box to them, they will not leave you alone. Concerned, I say to Prophet Suleiman salam, what if the jinns open the box and find out the ring is missing? Suleiman salam assures me, no, those jinns won't open the box until judgment day and this ring will stay with you. With a sense of relief, I agreed, very well, if you deem it reasonable. Suleiman salam says, Now I'm going to return this box and instructs me, Qasim, do one thing, come back tomorrow morning and I will show you how to use this ring. I said with anticipation, All right, I will come to you in the morning. As Suleiman salam departed, I was left there contemplating about him holding on to the ring he entrusted me with. I say, no doubt, all of Allah's prophets are pure. My heart fills with joy after meeting Suleiman salam. Instead of going to the top of the building, I head on home. On the way back, I leave signs on the path to the building, so I remember the way when I visit again tomorrow. The ring Prophet Suleiman salam gave me was large in size and it appeared to be golden in color. The head of the ring contained a very large shiny red diamond with no inscriptions written on it, and Allah knows best. Upon returning home, a sense of shame took over me. How could I have met Prophet Suleiman salam in such old attire? Determined to make amends, I carefully selected new clothes, anticipating my meeting with the noble Prophet in the morning. And when the electricity returned, I ironed my clothes and set them aside. As dawn broke, I showered, donned my fresh garments and ventured out with eagerness. My heart set on meeting Suleiman salam once more. Upon arriving at the building, I headed straight for the counter, but Suleiman salam was nowhere to be found. A concern crept over me as I realized that he had instructed me to come in the morning for guidance on using the ring, yet he was absent. However, an unfamiliar man was present there. He inquired, excuse me, who are you and who are you searching for? I explained that Suleiman had instructed me to come today and I was waiting for him. The man asked, Is your name Qasim? I said, Yes, my name is Qasim. The man says, Wait, Suleiman left you a letter. He had to do some urgent work and told me when Qasim comes, give this letter to him. I opened the letter. I see the instructions on how to use the ring. I come out of that building and slowly read what Prophet Suleiman had written. In the letter, Suleiman had also left detailed instructions on how to control the winds. A sense of happiness welled up within me as I read. I realized that with the power of the ring and control over the winds, I could repair and rework the generator and harness the wind's energy to produce electricity. A boundless amount of electricity could be generated, dispelling the darkness that had long gripped the country by the mercy of Allah. With newfound purpose, I used the ring's power to command the winds to carry me home. 
Witnessing the supernatural feat, I became very happy, rejoicing in the fact that Allah had indeed answered my prayers, offering a glimmer of hope to a world shrouded in darkness. With great care, I read the instructions within the letter and practiced the art of wielding the ring, ensuring its powers were at my command. Once satisfied with my understanding, I took a decisive step to protect this extraordinary knowledge. I burned the letter, ensuring that its secrets would remain mine alone. And even if someone was to take this ring from me, it would be useless for them. The ring's true nature would remain concealed within my chest, a profound and sacred trust that I would not divulge to anyone, for this ring was indeed a special ring. And the dream ends there. And Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum.